Prior to starting a paving operation, key considerations by the paving crew must be addressed. Following the tailgate meeting at the start of the day, it's important to complete a pre-paving checklist. Heat the screed. Center toe points. Set paving width. Set mainstream crown. Set slope extensions. Lower screed into starting position. Null the screed. Set the end gates. Set auger height to be two inches above what you're placing. Set feed sensors. Fill auger chamber. Pull off from starting point. Prior to placing hot mix, tack, which bonds layers of asphalt together, must be applied. A clean surface is imperative and should be swept or blown before application. Tack is typically an emulsion and must break before laying the asphalt. As the emulsion breaks, the water evaporates and the asphalt is left on the road. You will notice a change in color from brown to black when the emulsion breaks. Once the tack breaks and you've completed your pre-paving checklist, you're ready to pave. As the truck arrives, the dump man will safely direct trucks into position. He will make sure the hopper is one-third to two-thirds full at all times. As the mix enters the hopper, it is carried by the conveyor to the augers. The amount of mix being carried to the auger chamber is regulated by variable speed or by the flow gates, which will strike off the mix. Once the mix reaches the augers, it is distributed to the front of the screed. It is extremely important to keep a constant head of material in the front of the screed. The screed takes the head of material and maintains the correct thickness as the material creates the mat. The screed also maintains the angle of attack so the correct thickness is achieved. A rolling pattern is established in order to compact the mix to the appropriate density. The established rolling pattern determines the number of passes the roller will make behind the paver. Following the large steel wheel roller is the pneumatic or traffic roller. This is the finishing roller adding the last little bit of compaction to achieve density. Prior to paving commercial jobs, there are numerous considerations that must take place. 
The design of a parking lot is vital to the success of the paving operation. When not designed properly, parking lots can experience maintenance issues and also a shorter lifespan. The paving equipment is set at a certain size. It is physically impossible for the equipment to reach every nook and cranny in the lot. Think about a bullnose. The paver paves in straight lines. It cannot move around the arc. Handwork must be employed in these areas. The base installation is extremely important. Imagine the parking lot is a cake. The top asphalt layer is like the frosting and the base layer is like the cake. The frosting is only as good as the cake beneath it. The cake is not a good foundation if it is weak and full of cracks. Compaction of the base is extremely important to the proper performance of the asphalt. Be sure the subgrade is properly prepared and compacted prior to laying the base. Also keep in mind the slope of the base will determine the slope of the asphalt. To ensure proper drainage, the base must be installed at the proper slope. The asphalt will follow the same slope when it's placed. While the aesthetics of a parking lot are important, other variables must be considered. What does the traffic load look like? Is your area prone to getting a great deal of rain? Be sure to select the proper mix and determine the appropriate thickness for each lift. We mentioned how important the slope is when constructing the asphalt base to ensure proper drainage. Another consideration when thinking about drainage is to make sure there are enough drainage structures in the design to quickly and completely remove water from the surface. Taking these considerations into account prior to the paving operation will help the overall job run efficiently and be a success.